Welcome back. Our next guest was born and raised right here in South Carolina and has a wonderful motto I'd like to share. Educate yourself to lead yourself. For if you wait for others to show you the way, you will wait a long time. That's right. Known for his historical tales and essays about African American culture and history in our state, we're happy to welcome Damon Fordham, who just written his book here called True Stories of Black South Carolina. And you kind of rediscover some of the tales going back to even uh, Samuel Smalls. Tell us about him. Okay, he was the gentleman who inspired uh, Porgy and Bess, as a matter of fact. Wow. Um, back in uh, 1924, he was arrested for shooting at a young lady in uh, Brownie Street. And so Du Bois Hayward read about it the next morning in the Charleston News and Courier, and it inspired him to write the uh, first the book and then the play Porgy and Bess with uh, George Gershwin. Mm. And, you know, we were just talking about, here's a f old photo of him. It's amazing. Uh, tell us a little bit about when Martin Luther King Jr. was here. Okay, and uh, July the, so on July the 30th, 1967, he spoke at what was then the Charleston County Hall, which is an apartment complex today. And while he was on stage, there was a gentleman who s dropped a light bulb from the balcony. And if you noticed, everyone in that picture is looking around. But he stayed focused on his speech instead of uh, worrying about possible assassinations. Wow. And he was killed less than a year later. Wow, and it's just amazing that he's been gone for 40 years. Yes, that's true. That's and, true. and you say someone else is in that photo, too. Yes, we know very, very well. young uh, James Clyburn, who's, I believe, uh, second from Dr. King's left in that photo, when he was about 25 years old. Oh, that's wow. him sitting down wearing glasses. Now, and some other ones we have as well, Esau Jenkins, a lot of people. Right, Esau Jenkins was uh, basically the main civil rights leader in Charleston back during the 1960s and uh, early 1970s was born on Johns Island with a fourth grade education, managed to be a successful businessman and an outspoken leader for civil rights. And he was Dr. King's man in Charleston, in fact. And tell us about Mount Pleasant's town marshal. Yes, that was Edmund Jenkins. Back in the early 1900s, he served as a town marshal after blacks lost their political rights throughout the state of South Carolina. He was one of the few public officials that remained after that and continued to serve until three years before his death in 1927. Wow. Now I want to take you, Paul, these tales <laughs> together into, into a book. Because, I mean, there's well, a I've lot been, to tell, obviously. I've been writing for a number of years, and I've been teaching African American history at uh, Charleston Southern University and Springfield College, and I combined some things that I've written previously with several uh, new articles to create this book, uh, which was published on May the, uh, excuse me, on March the 7th of this year. Mm -hmm. So this pretty new. Yeah. And you're actually doing a book signing this weekend. Yes, that will be at the Town Center in Mount Pleasant at the Barnes & Noble on April the 6th, Sunday, April the 6th at uh, 2 p.m. I will be doing a uh, book signing for this book, True Stories of Black South Carolina. So I welcome you to come on out, and I'll be glad to sign a copy for you. And what were some of the uh, stories that sh shocked you that when you found out? Do you, anything stick out in your head? Well, there are a number of things that stuck out in my head, but there was a story that my father used to tell me about an African-American who saved the life of a druggist named Washington Ziegler in Mount Pleasant. And after this gentleman saved this man's life, he turned out to establish the Pitt Street Pharmacy wow. in Mount Pleasant. And years later, I saw that story in an old edition of the Charleston News and Courier. So it pays to listen to these old people's stories sometimes. That's yeah. right. It really yeah. is. And it pays to make sure that you know our history that goes right on. That makes us all who we are today. That's correct. That's right. And Fourth yeah. Caller wins a copy of the book, 849-2535. And Damon, where can they pick up this great book? They can pick it up at any uh, Barnes & Noble throughout the uh, throughout South Carolina at this present time. All right. All right. On Sunday. Everybody can see you on Sunday. That's right. Well, good to see you. It. You're very welcome. Yeah. Very welcome. I'll shake it first. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right. Well, up next, from a great book to a, to a good walk.